All right, thanks for watching. And today, as a follow-up on my Fourier series video, I want to show you how to find the Fourier sine series and the Fourier cosine series of a function. So, here's our problem for today. Let's find coefficients bm such that the function 1 can be expressed as the series m equals to 1 to infinity bm sine of mx on the interval 0 pi. So, here's a setup. We have the interval 0 pi and we have the function 1 and somehow we want to approximate 1 as, as much as we can with just sine functions. So it looks like it's easier than finding the full Fourier series. Turns out full Fourier series is easier. And it all relies on symmetry, namely on even and odd functions. So here's a crucial fact that helps us today. Suppose f of x has the Fourier series sum from m from 0 to infinity of am cosine mx plus bm sine of mx. If f, suppose this function f is odd on minus pi pi. So suppose you have a function that is odd on the full interval. So this is minus pi pi and you have a function that's basically symmetric around the origin. So it means that f of minus x equals to minus f of x. Then it turns out all the am equal to zero. So then am equals to zero and our series becomes a purely sine series because it becomes sum from m from 0 to infinity of 0 cosine mx plus bm sine of mx. Sine of mx. And b0 is 0 by convention, so it in fact solves our problem. In other words, if you had a function that was all on the full interval, then you have a pure sine series. And the question is, why is that true? Because if you recall the definition of Fourier coefficients, am would be the integral from minus pi to pi of, you take f and hug it with cosine mx, and you divide this by pi. But look, if f is odd, since cosine is even, even times odd is odd. So what you would do, you would integrate an odd function from minus pi to pi, and in particular, those two areas would cancel out, and you would get zero. That's great. If f is an odd function on minus pi pi, then you would get a full sine series. There are just two problems. First of all, our function was not odd because it was a function 1. Moreover, it wasn't defined on the whole interval. It was defined on minus pi pi. So the question is, what do we do with our function here? So here, right, we have f of x equals to 1 on 0 pi. So we have the interval 0 pi, and we add 1. But now, let's take the fact that we want the interval minus pi comma pi to advantage. So as I said, what do we want? We want an odd function on the whole interval minus pi pi. So the solution is simply to oddify f. 
So solution. Modify f to get a function f squiggle on minus pi pi. And oddify just means construct the odd extension. And it's defined as follows. f squiggle of x f squiggled of x. It's simply an odd function that agrees with f on the whole interval. Namely, it's just f of x on 0 pi, 0 at 0, and minus f of minus x on minus pi, 0. In other words, you literally take this chunk and reflect it about the origin. And that is very good because f squiggled is actually odd on minus pi pi. So by what I said, f squiggled has an actual sine series. So f squiggled can be expressed as a sine series. Okay. So let's call it bm squiggled sine of mx. Right? And again, what is bm squiggled? It's just given by the hugging formula. So again, b0 squiggled just by convention is 0 because it corresponds to you know, the, the sine of 0x. And bm squiggled is just given by the hugging formula. So integral from minus pi to pi of f squiggled x sine of mx dx over uh, pi, so whatever this number is. And now, let's try to get rid of f squiggled. Let's write it now in terms of f alone. So, this is an odd function. This is an odd function. So the whole thing becomes even. So in other words, you're integrating an even function over minus pi pi. So maybe something like that. And one thing you should know about even functions is that if you integrate or calculate the area for minus pi pi, it's same as two times the area from zero pi. So what you get then, you get two times the integral from 0 to pi of f squiggled of x sine of mx dx over pi. And now remember, what was f squiggled? On the interval 0 pi, it was just 1. So in other words, it was the same thing as f of x. Again, that was f squiggled of x. So in other words, the Fourier coefficients then become simply as follows. So bm squiggled then becomes 2 times integral from 0 to pi f of x sine of mx dx over pi. And now let's calculate this using the fact that f is 1. So f equals to 1, so you're left with 2 over pi, integral from 0 to pi, sine of mx dx, and that's 2 over pi, minus cosine of mx over m from 0 to pi, and that's, I guess, uh, 2 over pi, so minus cosine of me, cosine pi m over m, plus cosine of 0 over m, and 
cosine of pi m, it's minus 1 to the m, so 2 over pi, and then so cosine of 0 is 1, minus, minus 1 to the m over m. And you can write this in terms of even and odd, but that's fine. And so what do we get? We find that dm squiggle equals to 2 over pi m, 1 minus minus 1 to the m. So what we have then is that f squiggled of x has a Fourier series sum from m from 1 to infinity of uh, 2 over pi m 1 minus minus 1 to the m sine of mx and that's on minus pi pi and the question is how does that solve our original problem well this is valid on minus pi pi so in particular, it is valid on the smaller interval, 0 pi. And remember, on the smaller interval, f squiggle was equal to f. And so in the end, we get f of x it has a Fourier series, sum from m from 1 to infinity, 2 over pi m, 1 minus, minus 1 to the m, sine of m. In other words, if you want to expand 1 as a sine series, the coefficients become 2 over pi m. 1 minus, minus 1 to the m sine of mx. So, what is the moral of the story? Take away. Suppose you have a function f, and you want to express it in terms of a sine series, m from 1 to infinity, bm sine of mx. Then bm is simply equal to the integral from something to something. You hug f with sine of mx. You divide this. So, Now, you integrate this, usually it's from minus pi to pi, but because of this oddification, you do two times the integral from zero to pi, and you divide by pi. And that's dx. Okay. And it turns out, for cosine series, you get the same thing, but you have to use an eventification so it's the same thing when you construct an even extension. And let me do an example now with cosine. So how about you express AM? So uh, find AM such that the function x is expressed as sum from m from 0 to infinity AM cosine mx on 0 pi. And as I said, the moral was you do the usual um, you do the usual Fourier coefficients except you uh, do a 2 and you integrate from 0 to pi. So a0 Usually, it's integral of cosine mx times 1 divided by, so here, as I said, you integrate from 0 to pi, you divide by 2, and usually the denominator is 2 pi, and that stays like 2 pi. And sorry, I meant cosine of 0x, so just... I don't know what I wrote. I meant x times 1, so x times cosine 0x. So 2 times integral from 0 to pi of x dx over 2 pi, and that equals to 2 times, so 
antiderivatives x squared over 2 from 0 to pi over 2 pi. And I think if you calculate this, you get pi over 4. So integral of f of x times cosine 0 x. So you have that. And similarly, am. am is 2 times integral from 0 to pi of f of x. So x cosine of mx dx divided by whatever that number is, pi. And to calculate this, you can either use integration by parts or tabular integration. So you're left with, um, let's see, 2 over pi. If you want to differentiate this and anti-differentiate this, so x sine of mx over m from 0 to pi, and then minus 2 over pi, integral from 0 to pi of okay, 1 times sine of mx over m dx. Now, if you plug in the boundary terms, at 0, it's 0. At pi, it's pi sine of pi m, which goes to 0. So this disappears. And you're left with minus 2 over pi. Now, antiderivative then becomes minus cosine of mx over m squared from 0 to pi. And you're left with, so those minuses cancel out, and you have 2 over pi cosine of pi m, which is minus 1 to the m, minus 1 over m squared. Let me just check. Is that the same thing as before? Uh, it's almost the same thing as before, except here we have an m squared instead of m. Okay. But that's very good. So what does that tell us? Our answer is x has Fourier series pi over 4 plus sum from m from 1 to infinity of 2 over pi minus 1 to the m minus 1 over m squared cosine of mx. So you see, finding the cosine and sine series is almost as easy as finding the, um, the full Fourier series. Again, the only difference is you multiply the top by 2, and instead of integrating from minus pi to pi, you integrate from 0 to pi. But again, underlying this process is you know, the evenification, oddification, which in this case is pretty useful. And probably the reason why they teach you about this in Calc 1a. So just to make this uh, process exciting. All right, so I hope you like this little excursion into Fourier land. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.